What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. There's been a flurry of iPhone 4G rumors coming out recently and I want to put them all together into one place and actually when you do we get sort of a clearer picture of what we can expect from the fourth generation iPhone and we can even sort of extrapolate when a possible release date is going to be. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, recently the CEO of a small Canadian carrier, Saskatel, uh, did go on the record as saying a new iPhone would be coming out in June. Uh, this company does run a CDMA network, uh, which is what Verizon and Sprint run on, but they are getting ready to launch a 3G HSDPA, which is the same network technology that AT&T uses uh, a little earlier on in the summer, and is claiming that they will have the HSDPA GSM version of the iPhone. Now, it could be just a case of a small carrier CEO trying to get some exposure for the network, but that does jibe a little bit with what else we're going to talk about. Uh, the next thing was AT&T employees were told no vacation for a specific date in June, which certainly they've only done with iPhone launches. And uh, they usually coincide with Apple's WWDC, or Worldwide Developer Conference, which has generally been when the next generation iPhones have been announced. Uh, we saw it with the 3G, and we saw it the following year with the 3GS. Uh, traditionally, the phones have been announced in June, or at least in July, and all these conferences always take place at the uh, Moscone West Center. Um, and the calendar there, if you check it out right now, says there's a corporate event that's being booked, or that's already been booked, from June 28th to July 2nd, um, which certainly would jive quite nicely with not only the time of Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, which is generally just about five days-ish, uh, but also the time frame that we're hearing the rumors of an iPhone 4G launch. So let's talk some of the features that we expect to see. Well, rumors have been circulating, I guess, the past day about an all-aluminum enclosure in the next generation iPhone. I'll show you guys a picture of it right now. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on Techno Buffalo. Now, while there's a very good chance this is a fake image, I think the design cues that we're seeing in that image, though, uh, may actually come to fruition. Uh, the all-aluminum enclosure is what Apple did with the iPad, and there's been a lot of talks, but okay, is an all-aluminum enclosure going to reduce Wi-Fi and 3G reception? Uh, well, the answer is really no. Uh, what Apple did was, instead of making the back of the Apple logo sort of look like a mirror, it's actually right where the Wi-Fi radio is placed. Now, certainly there have been some Wi-Fi reception issues with the iPad. Uh, we can only assume that the engineering team has learned from those. Uh, so I think that we can actually get an all-aluminum enclosure and without really sacrificing much uh, wireless transfer fidelity. That's one big one of the big knocks on having a wireless. That was also why the first generation iPhone sort of had the aluminum on the top and the black, black down below. The black was where all the sort of wires and antennas were. And on the iPhone 3G and 3GS, the plastic, so the signal could be transmitted a bit easier. So let's talk about some features. There's been talk of video chat and mobile eye chat in the iPhone since before we even saw the first generation iPhone. However, there seems to be more concrete evidence of us finally seeing eye chat in the fourth generation iPhone. Uh, developers and some really fantastic uh, hackers have gone through the SDK for OS 4.0 and have gone through and seen many, many instances of mentioning of iChat and even gone through to extrapolate uh, icons that actually show what the video chat icons will look like. So I think we're finally going to be able to see this. It looks like AT&T's network has gotten into shape where it can finally support it. Uh, which may have been the reason we didn't see it in previous versions. So video chat, I think, is something that we are definitely going to see. Uh, Apple has been addressing, albeit very slowly, uh, some of the biggest concerns and problems people have had with the iPhone operating system. Uh, first, it was no MMS. Then it was no cut, copy, and paste. Uh, then it was no multitasking, which we now have with iPhone OS 4.0. I'm sort of seeing sort of things one by one start to get slashed out. And the video conferencing is sort of the next big thing that I think is, is due. Uh, so with OS 4.0, we see multitasking, we see folders. Uh, what we don't see and what we haven't had is any sort of file management system. So you can't just put something in a folder and uh, go back and get it later like you can in OS 10 or Windows. You can create folders for apps, um, but not really folders for documents. Uh, we're seeing universal uh, inboxes, which is something that Apple definitely needed. Although I do expect that when OS 4.0 is finally launched, we'll have some additional mail features. Um, which the mail is really a lacking application on the iPhone. Uh, ability to star or flag and better integration, I think, with online storage and exchange servers are something that's going to be coming. But I know all you guys are out there wondering, what about an iPhone on Verizon? Uh, well, I've gone on the record as saying I didn't think one was coming. I've been saying it for years. Uh, however, it looks like this may be the year we finally do see an iPhone on Verizon. 
Uh, there's been rumors circulating that AT&T's exclusivity is actually going to end with this upcoming device. So if we were ever going to get an iPhone on Verizon, I think we've got the best chance of seeing it on the fourth generation phone, which again, looks like we could end up seeing uh, towards the tail end of June, uh, which would be really uh, uh, quite nice. The other hardware manufacturers and software manufacturers have really caught up to Apple. I think Apple set the bar very high at the first generation iPhone, and then we had WebOS and Android, um, and even now Microsoft's Windows Phone 7, um, which dropped the series from its name, are starting to give uh, Apple a good run for their money, and they're being forced to compete now and forced to re-innovate. Between the original iPhone, the iPhone 3G, okay, we got a 3G radio. From the 3G to the 3GS, we got faster processor and more RAM. We've had incremental uh, flash storage increases, which I would expect as well for the 4G, but nothing really big. And I think a video chat would really be the killer feature that the other platforms, at least in the US, just aren't offering. And sort of talking about the flash increase, I think we'll see a jump from the 32 largest now size up to 64 and probably have 64 and 32 configurations for the iPhone 4G, which is a ton of space uh, for a mobile device and something that I think would really be the, the sweet spot for these mobile phones. So what do you guys think about the iPhone 4G? I think that Apple's got a few sort of aces up their sleeve with tricks they haven't showed us yet. I think the biggest trick they're going to show us is going to be video chatting. So guys, do you agree, disagree, any feature you'd love to see? Do you think a Verizon iPhone's coming or iPhone on another carrier? T-Mobile or Sprint. Uh, I'd love to hear from you, either text or video response. And you guys, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out Techno Buffalo for more information on this topic and all your tech news, uh, to create your own tech blog and even monetize it and make some money, and to interact with fellow users uh, with our built-in social network. And you guys, I'm John Rettinger. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.